Amen, amen, amen. I believe that if you're on this live stream, God has purpose on the inside of you. I believe that there's greatness calling your name. I believe you realize there's an aim, a function, an idea, an intention, an object, a point, principle, a reason in which you live your life and God is pulling you for. I believe that even in the middle of 2020, there's something on the inside of you that won't stop talking, that keeps pushing you to activate something and you just really can't figure out what it is. You feel like you don't fit into your group. You feel like you're different. I get it. I understand because God has called you to something bigger than what you ever imagined. And I believe that this message, the next 30, 40 minutes of your life is going to change the rest of your life. So this is what we want you to do. Everybody loves a four star experience. I want you to get a four S experience here. Number one, the first S is we want you to stay. Stay till the end. Don't hop off and go nowhere else. Stay till the end. The next S is space. Create a space around you. You might got to situate yourself so that you can focus in. Maybe get a pencil and pen, what, a pen and paper, whatever you need, but create a space and where you can focus. The next thing, if this message resonates with you, you need to save it so you can revisit it and begin to unpack it even more to hear what the Lord is saying to you. And if it blesses your life, it could bless somebody else. So the last S is to share. We need for you to stay, create a space, save it and share it. And we will see you in a few moments as God begins to unpack the word that I believe is going to impact your life. We love you and we'll go into the word in a second. Bless the Lord. Today we're going to be coming from 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 11 through 17. Last week we read from 3 to 20. This week we're focusing in on 11 through 17. 1 Samuel 11 through 17 says this. The woman asked, whom do you want me to bring up? He answered, bring up Samuel. When the woman saw Samuel, she screamed. She said, why have you tricked me? You are Saul. The king said to the woman, don't be afraid. What do you see? The woman said, I see a spirit coming up out of the ground. Saul asked, what does he look like? The woman answered, an old man wearing a coat is coming up. Then Saul knew it was Samuel. He bowed face down on the ground. Samuel asked Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Saul said, I'm greatly troubled. The Philistines are fighting against me and God has left me. He won't answer me anymore, either by the prophets or in dreams. That's why I called for you. Tell me what to do. Samuel said, the Lord has left you and has become your enemy. So why do you call on me? He has done what he said he would do. The things he said through me. He has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to one of your neighbors, David. Can you pray with me under the topic today of illegal entry part two? Illegal entry part two. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we bless your name for the great things that you have done and the great things you continue to do. Lord, we expect for nothing less than your greatness and nothing less than to feel you, see you and know that you are real. We open up our hearts to you today, Father, to speak to our spirits. God, that we may know you, know your truth and be able to live it out. Lord, we ask for in this moment that you will speak to us clearly through your scriptures and we will feel you and know the truth about you. And that truth will make us free. We thank you for all the great things you are going to do and things you've already done. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I believe that in this moment, if you're watching this message, you know you got purpose on your life. I believe that if you come across this message in this moment, that God wants to speak to your heart in a very special way. That this is not just one of those moments that's just passing you by, but God wants to speak to you in a very special way. I believe that you hear greatness calling you. I believe that even in the midst of the craziness of 2020, there's something on the inside of you that's still pushing you, something on the inside of you that's still trying to activate. There's something on the inside of you that's recognizing that you are different, that you can't just fit in with the crowd. You can't just fit in with what your norm was, that you are set apart. There's something on the inside of you is different and you're realizing that more and more. And there are some key principles that we want to pull out of this text, out of this story, out of this passage of the Bible that so much is so much in there, but we want to pull out a, some key principles on how to activate and move forward on what God is calling us to do in this season. As we look in this text right here, we find Saul 
is king, but David has been anointed to be king. Saul's army is going up against the Philistines in the morning, and Saul is fearful about that battle. Samuel, who was previously uh, his prophet, the one that would speak to Saul on behalf of the Lord and speak the word of God to Saul, is now dead, and he cannot speak to him any longer as he did in the past. Saul attempts to pray to God, but does not get a timely response from the Lord. And because he doesn't ask with a pure heart, the Lord does not answer him. See, the Bible talks about that anyone who asks receives, but it also says that if you don't receive, it's because the reason that you ask is wrong. Saul didn't ask because he wanted a clear direction. He asked because he wanted to get bailed out of a situation that he found himself in. He did not pray to the Lord for correction. He just wanted to get out of his situation. I know that don't sound like anybody we know. Saul then panics because God is not responding on his time clock. He got a deadline for God to respond. And since God is not responding on his time, Saul takes things into his own hands to make something happen. I know that don't sound like none of us to be able to make something happen on our own because God's taking too long. But Saul does this. Saul disguises himself and goes to find a medium which he was supposed to remove all of them from the land. But his people knew of where one was that they saved just in case. And he goes to this medium disguised because the medium would think that Saul was coming to kill her if he showed up as himself. So he disguised himself in order to get what he needed from her. Mediums used trickery, sorcery, all these different areas that they were skilled and trained in to bring up impersonating spirits of those who they were requested to bring up. And so they used this, this trickery to, to bring up familiar spirits, spirits that would look similar to what the person requested, but then be able to use those familiar spirits to direct them where they wanted them to go. So the medium had control because they were in the middle. This person couldn't get to who they were trying to get to. So they came to the medium and the medium pretended to feel like they could bring them up and use those impersonating spirits, those familiar spirits to direct the message that the media controlled. See, you understand in that medium is the word from which we derive media. OK, we talked about that last week. It is the in between. It is the middle. If you think about even T-shirt sizes, you got the large, you got the small and in the middle, you got the medium. So in the middle, that's the word that we derive media from. And so it, it's it's the information that you want to get. And then there's where you are. But the media stands in the middle. They grab the information and then feed it to you and see the. The media, somebody say media, has the ability to make something look real and cause impressionable viewers to question the truth that they know because of what they're seeing in the media or through the media. I was watching, you know, online the other day through social media and I was seeing in this video, um, it was like a prank video or something. Anyway, the guy had a hammer. And while he was working the hammer, he poured like lemon juice and all this water stuff and all this stuff on it. And then when it was done, he began to ball up the hammer like it was, you know, just like jello or whatever. And I was like, man, that's crazy. I, what in the world is going on here? Like, why would like lemon juice and something else create a hammer? Because it wasn't true. The media began to work their magic to show you a perspective that would make you question your truth. It was fake. It was a spoof. It wasn't real, but it looked almost, somebody say, almost real. The media has the ability to make things look real that are not. Media can direct you to their preferred outcome based on what they show you and when they show you. That's what advertisers do all the time. They show you certain things at the right time to make you act. While you are searching for something else, they stand in the middle and say, look, don't you see this is on sale? Don't you see that is on sale? Now, once they see that's on sale, let's follow it by a website prompt. Let's follow it by the, it's going, uh, going out of stock. Let's follow it by this. And then it makes the person who is impressionable act 
in the way they intended for them to do it at first. Media paints a beautiful picture of their perspective. Depending on what media you watch, it's depending on what they show you. They paint their perspective because they stand in the middle. But as powerful as media can be, it is still a tool in the hands of the viewer. And if it is a tool, then that means the viewer has a choice on whether or not to view it or not. Somebody say amen. There, You don't have to use media. It is a tool in which you use to search out intended information. See, the woman in verse 11 asked Saul, whom do you want me to bring up? Can I ask you a question? What do you keep bringing up? Ooh. What do you keep bringing up? If you will allow me to modernize this moment for a second, to bring the text to a place where we can actually connect with it. And I understand we look at Saul and say, why would you go to a psychic? Why would you go to someone who works spirit? So why would you go to something like this? And it's easy to put Saul on the other side of the fence away from us, not really connecting with us, not really seeing ourselves in the text. But if I can modernize it for just a moment and bring it in at this point, Saul has been given access to media and could decide what to put in the search bar. The media asked him, what do you want to see? And upon your request is who I will go after. He chose to bring up what was dead. Why search for the living amongst the dead? That's the scripture that pops into my head. Why in the world would I go to the dead to give me information about the living? If God needed what was in your yesterday, you would find it present in your today. Somebody give God a praise there. If God needed what was in your yesterday, you would find it present in your today. If you lost it in your yesterday, it wasn't necessary for your today. What's necessary for your destiny can't leave you and what's not necessary can't stay. So that's why I'm not worried about who left. I'm not worried about what happened in the past. I'm not worried about what money I lost. I'm not worried about the job that I didn't get because if it was necessary for my destiny, then God would have allowed me to have it because he will not let me go without. He supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. Therefore, what I find in my hand today is significant enough to connect me to my destiny to move towards my tomorrow. So if it's not in my today, it's not necessary for my today. Can God give, can give God a praise right there? So how do you view where you are? How do you view what's in your hand? How do you view who you are? Because if you view yourself as not enough, then that's part of the problem. You got to view where you are. You got to view who you are as more than a conqueror and what the word says so that you can have the confidence, have faith in the fact that God has equipped you with whatever you need to go through any challenge that he has placed before you. Amen. Any challenge that you find yourself in, no matter how big, no matter how small, God has placed in you exactly what you need in this moment to move forward. You should not be defined by others definition of you. How dare you define yourself by your pay scale? How dare you define yourself by what others have to say? How dare you define yourself by others who were in this position? How dare you define yourself by what media tells you? And the fact of the matter that nobody ever talks about is that Saul didn't need the media in the first place. You cannot find yourself. You cannot find your identity amongst the media. You can go straight to God for yourself and he wants to speak to you. You are defined by God's word and his word alone. Somebody say his word alone. Text his word alone. Throw some hearts on his word alone. Whatever God has to say about you is who you are. No matter what you are facing, God's word is truth. Stop bringing up old stuff. Stop bringing up old stuff. Why do you keep bringing up what's dead? Why do you keep bringing up what happened? Why do you keep bringing old stuff into new situations? It didn't work. So what? They left you. So what? They hurt you. So what? They lied on you. So what? You lost the money. So what? It didn't work out. So what? They fired you. So what? You got divorced. So what? You made a mistake. So what? At what point are you going to let yesterday stay in yesterday? Because the only reason that it still has influence over you, because you're the one who keep bringing it up. 
Will we let the dead stay dead and let God speak to our hearts about how to live? When are we going to ha- let that happen in our life? We need to let it die. Somebody say, let it die. Let it die. Let yesterday die in yesterday. Don't let one mistake become two because you so hung up on what happened yesterday. But pastor, you don't know how I felt yesterday. Well, guess what? I missed it. I wasn't here yesterday, but we are right here today and we can do what we need to do with today to get to where God wants us to get somebody say amen, amen, amen. And so we find truth in a strange place. Somebody say truth in a strange place. When the woman saw Samuel in verse 12, she screamed. She said, why have you tricked me? You are Saul. The medium wasn't expecting the true Samuel to show up, y'all. She wasn't expecting truth to show up. She was expecting to use her trickery. She was expecting to use her faults as appearing real. She was expecting to use her, her skill set to bring up something that was going to impersonate Samuel. But when the true Samuel showed up, it scared her so much that she screamed. Have you ever had truth show up in a strange place? The Bible doesn't say that she brought Samuel up. The Bible says that Samuel showed up. It was not at the hand of the medium that Samuel came. It was in spite of the medium that Samuel came. Have you ever had truth show up in a strange place? Have you ever had truth come from the mouth of the unexpected? Have you ever had truth come from your children? Have you ever had truth show up on your job? Have you ever had truth just show up in your car while you're driving trying to mind your own business? Have you ever had God stop your plan in the middle of your foolishness and begin to speak truth? Amen. It was not because of the medium. It was not because of Saul's foolishness. It was in spite of the medium. It was in spite of Saul's foolishness that God spoke. Some of our shining moments in life are not because of us. They are in spite of us. Woo! Some of our shining moments in life are not because of us. They are in spite of us. In spite of us doing against what God said, in spite of us not grasping the call that's on our life, in spite of us not being obedient, God still bless us. That's the grace and the mercy and that's shed. For, and, and God begins to use us in ways that we never imagined in spite of us. He sees all our flaws. He sees all our shortcomings, but loves us anyway, but calls us anyway. And I believe God is speaking to your heart today. God said what he said. Somebody say he said what he said. God said what he said. In verse 17, Samuel speaks to Saul. He says this, he, God, has done what he said he would do. The things he said through me. This is what Samuel says to him. Samuel tells Saul that God is doing exactly what he said concerning him and the fact that Samuel already told Saul this while he was alive. The promises of God are yes and amen. Somebody say yes and amen. But here's the kicker. We love that when we talk about that God has made us the head and not the tail, but the ones that we don't like and the ones that we do like, his promises are yes and amen. If God said it, that settles it. You don't have to approve it. We don't need an act of Congress. It cannot be vetoed. We don't have to wait for somebody to get along and clap their hands for it. If God says it, that is it. You don't believe me? Let's go to Genesis. Genesis tells us male and female, he created them, blessed them, and told them to be fruitful and multiply. Today, you still need male and female to produce human life. He said, let there be light, and light is still letting. He said to place the waters in the place and we still catching waves. He gave man dominion. And last time I checked, man is still the dominating creation on the earth. He told the sun to shine and science has yet to make it stop. If God says it, it is established. He said what he said. And people tend to think that the word of God dies when they disassociate from the person who said it. It don't matter who, what church you go to. It don't matter if you stop going to church. It don't matter if you decide that you're going to hide from that person. It doesn't matter if you said, I'm going to unfollow them. I'm going to block that person. If God said it, the word is still true concerning you. Even when that person dies, the word of God is still true concerning you. See, you are avoiding a person and it's the word of God. It's the call of God. It's the anointing of God that keeps 
finding you. In your disobedience, it found you. In your running, it found you. In your pain, it found you. In your tears, it found you. In your sin, it found you. It found Jonah on the ship and in the well. It found David in the field. It found Balaam's donkey and spoke into his life. It found Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. It found Daniel in the lion's den. It found John the Baptist in the womb. It found Elijah in the cave. It found Abraham walking on the sand and looking at the stars. It found Moses by way of a burning bush. It found the lips of mothers of Jesus' mother at the wedding. It met the woman at the tomb to tell Jesus, to, to tell them that Jesus is risen. I need for you to understand that God has a way of speaking truth in strange places. And 2020 is a strange place, but God is still speaking. And he will use whatever he wants to use to say whatever he wants to say to speak into your life. And when truth shows up, Everything else begins to fall by the side because you can recognize truth every time. Truth don't need no defending. All you got to do is let truth reveal itself and you'll be able to spot the truth from the fake. Amen. God is still speaking. Somebody say God is still speaking. He's still speaking in the midst of everything we find ourselves in. God is still speaking and truth is showing up in the middle of craziness. Truth is showing up in the middle of falsehood. Truth is showing up in the middle of fear. Truth is showing up. He is speaking to your heart right now while you were scrolling, searching for something else on media. Truth has showed up and paused your life for a second and you're hearing truth into your life and something great is happening on the inside of you. Something great is pushing on the inside of you. Something is releasing on the inside of you and God is pushing something in a major way on the inside of you and God is going to do great great things in your life. And I want you to understand that truth has showed up on your behalf. Truth in a strange place. Some of you guys are laying down still with your hair wrapped, still in your pajamas, still where you are driving down the road and you haven't felt the Holy Spirit like this in a long time. But truth has shown up in a strange place. And I believe that if you can receive truth in a strange place, God will take you to places that you never imagined. I believe that you can receive truth in a strange place that he will set you apart from everybody else and begin to do something in you that you know that he has birthed inside of you. I believe that if you can receive truth right where you are and begin to believe what God has to say about you, then you'll see change happen in your life. Amen. God is as equally present right where you are as he is if you were in a church right this moment. All it depends on is how you believe, how you receive the word of God. I remember this one time I was in a barber shop with other people long, long ago in a far, far away place that was far, far away from 2020 when we were able to be in room with other people. Amen. I was in a barber shop. And barbershop talk is not the same thing as church talk. Barbershop talk, you hear some things that you wouldn't dare say in church. You hear some four letter words that you wouldn't teach your children. Here's some conversations that you might want to turn your head. But the fact of the matter is the barbershop. So I was in there and it don't bother me. I'm not allergic. I'm not going to lose my salvation by other people having a conversation they feel comfortable with. Doesn't bother me at all. And I was in there, I was chilling. And so they didn't know that I was a pastor and I left to get something out of my car and I came back. And I was met with apologies saying, we're sorry that we were talking like this. We didn't know that you were a minister. We didn't know that you were a pastor. So my apologies to you for the conversation that we was having. I told them like, hey bro, I'm good. I'm good. Anything that you can say in front of God, you can say in front of me. And it got silent. They kind of looked at me kind of strange. But I pray that you're not looking at me too strange as you're watching today to understand that God is everywhere and he sees everything. He don't show up when Pastor P show up. He don't show up just at the church. He don't show up just in your car. God is everywhere and he sees everything in the valley, in the low lows of life. He is there on the mountaintop in the highs of life. He is there. David said it like this. If I ascend into the heavens, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. In the places where we hide our shortcomings, he's still there. At the church, he's there. On our job, he's there. At the club, he's there. In this season, he's there. In 2020, he's there. In our future, he's there. I need you to understand that right here where we find ourselves, God will never leave us nor forsake us. He is right here with us because he's equally present everywhere at the same time. You can't run from him. You can't hide from him. You can't ignore him long enough. He 
is relentless. He will find you. He is chasing you. He is coming after you. He wants you. He loves you with the everlasting love. And I need for you to understand and get to a point where you stop running from him, where you stop making excuses about what he's called you to. And you will finally turn around and face what's chasing you. Woo. When are you going to stop running and turn around and finally face what's chasing you? Because God has something he wants to do in your life that is amazing. And it's not because of who said it. It's because God said it. You've been trying to disassociate yourself from it because it came from a certain person. But it's not because of who said it. It's because that God said it. So don't die outside of purpose because you got a problem with the person who said it. Mm -hmm. You like the word, but you wish it was delivered from somewhere else. <laughs> You like the gospel, but you wish it came from a different church. You like the word of God, but you wish it came from a different vessel. Stop worrying about the vessel. Stop worrying about the church. Stop worrying about where it came from. You need to understand that the word of God concerning you is the word concerning you. No matter who said it, it's because God said it and they were just a vessel. But I understand we go through pain, but we can't let pain take the pen of our life. Don't let hurt take the pen of your life. Don't let what you've been through begin to dictate to you about where you're going. We decide a movie by how the movie ends. When you look at most movies, they could go anywhere. But because the author knows, because the producer knows the end, he named the movie based on the end. God called you based on your end, not your beginning. Though you may walk like everybody else, though you may talk like everybody else, though you might be born in the, in the same city as abundance of people, God has a specific story for you and he called you forth based on what he wants to do with you not based on where you find yourself today there is purpose on the inside of you so let Jesus have the conversation let Jesus have a talk he said have a little talk with Jesus amen if you would begin to talk to Jesus about what he wants to do for you your eyes will begin to open many of us have been going to talk to media about what God has called us to do Media doesn't have the answer. Media is going to give you their perspective. Media is not going to bring you what God wants to bring you. Saul didn't need the medium in the first place. He was praying directly to him. Had he waited on what God wanted to do or had he paused long enough to revisit what God had already said, he would have known what was coming up to him. But instead of instead of doing that, he began to be active in his own plan outside of what God told him to do just to find out that God said what he said. If Saul had spent more time about preparing for the battle, maybe things would have been different. But while Saul could have been preparing, while God, Saul could have been strategic, while Saul could have been thinking about what God wants him to do, while Saul could have repented from his ways, he was going to make his own way. How many times when we find ourselves where we could be repenting for what God has, has told us to do and in our disobedience, we are trying to make an excuse for our disobedience. Well, it doesn't have to be that. Why does it have to be this way? It has to be that way because God said what he said. Let the conversation start with Jesus and let him rule your life. I wish somebody would give a praise right there. He said what he said concerning you, but I don't like it. He said what he said, but I don't see it. He said what he said, and there's nothing that you can do to stop it. You can't sin enough to stop it for the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. And I believe that God is awakened to something on the inside of somebody today to say he said what he said. He said that you are healed, but I don't feel here. It don't matter. He said that you are healing. He said what he said, but I don't feel free. He said that you are free. I don't feel safe. He said that you are saved. I need for you to understand that we need to get past what we feel. We need to get past what other people are saying. We need to get past what the media is trying to tell us. And we need to get into the word of God and get into his truth because he said what he said. And I believe there's somebody on here watching today. If it ain't but one person that's realizing that, you know what? I've been trying to do it on my own. I've been trying to be saved. I've been trying to move into what God has for me by association. I've been to try to associate my way into the calling of God. I've been trying to associate my way into heaven. I've been, been trying to ride off of grandma's prayers. I've been trying to, to, just, to just watch my way into, into God's purpose. But it's, guess what? You can't associate your way into God's purpose. Yes, you can use this as a resource, but God is a source. And you're going to have to connect up to the source and begin to allow God to speak to you. It's time to stop running and face what's chasing you right in the middle of your life. He found you right here in this moment. He has found you right here where you were expecting something else. He found you and it is time to accept him. And if you want to accept Jesus Christ into your heart today, this is the best day to do so because it is today. 
Amen. And he wants to speak to your heart. He wants to come into your heart. He wants to dwell with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. And the more you relinquish your will and allow him to speak to you, the more your life will begin to line up with the story that he already began in your life. And things will begin to make sense because he is author. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He is making a story right before your very eyes. And it's not one that's just by happenstance. He has a beginning. He says he has an expected end that he wants to give you, that he He's called you. He's positioned you. He's fashioned you. He knew you before your mom and your dad got together. You were with him in heaven and he has a heavenly plan that he wants to unfold in your life. And if you would just give your total self to him, you will experience the fullness of what God wants for your life. And you want to accept him today. We're going to pray in a moment. And I believe there are some Christians on here that simply need to face what God is calling them to that they've been running from it long enough, that they can't hide from it. They've been trying to ignore it. But God is calling you today in a great way that you know that he's calling you out of your comfort zone. He's calling you beyond what you thought you wanted. He's calling you beyond what you were comfortable with. Yeah, you was out of the box. You was going with what he said, but he's called you way outside of that thing. He's called you. Yeah, you was in the boat, but he's called you to step out on the water. He's calling you out of what's comfortable. He's calling you out of what you think you want. He's calling you out of what you thought. He's calling you out of the limitations that you placed on him. He's saying, I got more for you and I want to pull you up out of what you find yourself in and give you something that you haven't even imagined. But will you trust me? And we have to accept the responsibility because you're not hiding from God, you're hiding from you. We need to accept the responsibility. God knows right where you are. You're not hiding from him, you're hiding from you. Because at the slim chance that what God said about your life is actually true, you don't know if you can handle it. But it ain't for you to handle it. It's for him to handle it. And it scares you. The fact that the word of God over your life just might be true. And what if it is? Because I ain't never seen nothing like that before. So I want to pray for those who need healing and deliverance. And I want to pray priests in your household as well. Can we pray together? Father, I thank you. And I bless your name for the great things that you have done. I ask you, Lord, to continue to speak how you want to speak, move how you want to move. Lord, I ask you for peace to reign in this home right now. Let your Holy Spirit saturate that space. Let it come through phones, TVs. Let it come through computers, Father. Wherever they are, Lord, I thank you that you are just as present there as if we were all together right here. And God, I thank you that you're speaking to their hearts now, that you're pulling on them, that you're tugging them. God, that you know that they are more than what they see with their eyes. And if you want to accept Jesus Christ into your heart today, simply repeat after me. Say, Dear Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin, and I accept you into my heart. I renounce Satan. I believe you rose on the third day with all power in your hand, and I accept you into my heart. Make my salvation real to me and lead me by your Holy Spirit. And before we play, pray amen, before we say amen, I want to pray for those Christians that are facing the call that's on their life, facing the purpose that's on their life, facing the comfort zone and the other side of the comfort zone. Lord, I thank you that you're using them in a mighty way. And Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in their hearts. And God, I just ask that you use them mightily. I ask for the boldness will rise up on the inside of them, that they shall speak clearly, that they shall know that you are real in every step of the way. And the faith to leap, the faith to jump, the faith to move is rising up on the inside of them, that they may speak what you called them to speak, that they may say what you called them to say, that they may start what you've called them to start, that they may launch what you've called them to launch. They may believe what you've called them to believe and exercise their faith in your truth. God, I thank you for those who need healing in their life, who need deliverance in their life. God, I thank you that they're completely whole. They're a completely balanced Christian right now. I thank you for peace rising up on the inside of them. And I speak life into their home. I speak life into their family. I speak life into their situation. I speak joy into their situation. I thank you, God, that you are rising up and your Holy Spirit is saturating their space and following them everywhere they go. We thank you for all these things. In 
Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can we give God a praise right there? Can we lift him up and glorify his holy and righteous name? For he is great and greatly to be praised. I dare you to give him a shout. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I know everybody may not be tuned in around you to this, but I dare you to give him a praise right there, right where you are. For he is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. You prayed that prayer today and, and something on the inside of you changed. The key part is believe it in your heart. The combination of saying with your mouth and believing in your heart will change your life forever. If you prayed that prayer today, we want to connect with you. So this is what I want you to do as the prompts are coming up on the screen. I want you to text Real Church to 54244 because that's going to keep us in connection. That's going to keep us connected. And, and all, immediately it's going to send you an app. And this, in this app is going to be uh, Bible studies. In this app is going to be prayer requests. In this app is going to be worship music. In this app is a lot of different things that will bless your life. It tells you about us too. And I would love to talk to you even more on there on the screen popping up is my personal where you can text me directly. Please text me. I would love to, to talk with you. I would love to chat with you. Just me and you having a conversation. You can even text me and let me know what you need. I need prayer for this. You know, I need help with this. I need what you need. Just text me and I, I will talk about it and we'll, we'll get everything worked out. Amen. And so we believe that God is doing great things in your life. And we believe that God is doing something something special in the life of Relevant Church. And if you want to sow into what God is doing here at Relevant Church, we would love to have you do that. And the prompts are coming up on the screen. Even more so, this week, this is what I want you to do. I want you to ask God, what do you want me to do? That's what I want you to do. Ask God, what do you want me to do? I want you to write down what he says or shows you. Write down what he says or shows you. And this is the key right here. I want you to read your Bible on purpose with focused energy for seven days this week. Every day, focused energy. Not I'm just going to do it real quick. Focused energy. Sit down, focus and read the word. And if you can't figure out what it's saying, get help. And if you can't find help, text me and I will get you what you need. But we got to put focused energy on the word of God. We got to put set apart time for the word of God. That which you plan for is that which you love. And so I want you to plan to get in God's word seven days this week, every day. Somebody say every day because we are centered on God, declaring his truth while living in faith. Amen. You guys have a blessed week. You are living victorious and I speak victory and peace over your life. God bless you.